afternoon students so in previous class we have been seen or we have discussed about the units and measure measurements so in today's class we will be looking at the measurement of large distances so when we talk about measurement so measuring means like i gave you all an example yesterday that to measure something we use a measurement tape if the measurement what we are taking is in, is in small in quantity what we do is we usually take uh, we usually measure with the help of a scale or we measure it with the help of a measuring tape for example if you have to measure a length of a wire or a rope you usually use the measuring tape to measure right in the same way what if you have to measure a distance from earth to moon so how will you measure it is not possible for us to measure that distance with the help of a measuring tape right so in order to measure such distances what we use is a method which is called as the parallax so we use this parallax method in order to measure the large distances so what is this parallax method so imagine that this is an object which i have so i am holding this object at the center so when i am viewing this object from this side from this position so at that moment what happens is the position and the direction of the object for me is in this manner similarly when i am viewing the same object from this direction that is from the another direction and another position then i have the position and the direction of the this object in a different manner right so this is what we called it to be as the parallax hence we define the parallax to be as the apparent displacement or the difference in the apparent direction of an object as seen from the two different positions of the observer so that is what we call it to be as the parallax okay so this is the representation of the parallax okay so this image represents the tag uh, represents the parallax method so next we have is the basis so what is this basis okay now consider this diagram where we have an object say to be as o then we have two different points that is point a and point b so this point a and point b represents two different positions from where the viewer is viewing the object or the observer is observing the object so the distance between these two points that is point 1 or point 2 or we can also call it to be as the distance between the two positions a and b which is represented as b is called to be as the basis so we define basis to be as the distance between the two points so the distance between two points a and b is said to be the basis okay students so the next concept we have is the parallax angle so the parallax angle is nothing but you see that in the diagram we have is point a and point b and here we have an object object so we see that this part is nothing but the basis okay so here the angle which is formed angle which is formed is called to be as the parallax angle parallax angle so we define the parallax angle to be as the angle subtended by the basis so you see here in this diagram that this angle is subtended by this basis hence we call this angle to be as the parallax angle so next we have is the determination of large distances by parallax method as we know that the parallax method is used to determine the large distances so here we will see how can we determine the large distances using this parallax method so let us begin 
So let us consider this diagram where we can see that there is a planet and we, we are observing that planet from two different positions on the earth that is P1 and P2 and here we have is in center is the basis okay. So again the distance between the earth and the planet that we are observing is given as D and again we have the parallax angle to be as theta okay. So then it is okay. So next we see, we know that the distance of the basis that is the distance A between A and B the basis is very very small when compared to the distance from earth to the planet. So this distance that between P1 and P2 is very small right we are we are looking at the planet from two, two different positions of the earth. So that difference cannot be equal to or greater than the distance from the earth to the planet whichever we are observing. So that is what we have written here that is basis B is very very less than the distance capital D and angle theta is also very small therefore the angle theta that is nothing but a parallax angle will also be very very small. Then therefore what happens is B becomes the arc length of the circle so B becomes the arc length of the circle where it has got its center as P and therefore D becomes the radius of the circle. Hence we can say that the parallax angle theta can be written as arc length divided by the radius where we have our arc length to be as B and the radius to be as D. Therefore we can say from here D can be written as D is equal to B by theta where D is nothing but the distance. Hence we have determined that the large distances can be calculated using parallax method to be as D is equal to B by theta. So next concept we have is the determination of diameter of moon. So we have seen the determination of large distance earlier that is from a planet to another planet ok. So now we are going to see is the determination of the diameter of moon ok. So here again look at the diagram where we have this position as P and which represents the earth surface then we have P1 and P2 where P1 and P2 are two diametrical opposite points of the planets. So we have a planet in this way from where we are viewing the moon then we have P1 and P2 which are diametrically opposite points of the planets. Then we have capital D which is again the distance from the earth to moon then alpha where alpha we have is the angular diameter then again we have is the so understood. So next as we have seen earlier where we saw that basis B was very very less than the diameter in the same manner we also have here that the diameter D that is the distance between P1 and P2 represented as D is very very small when we compare it to the capital D that is this capital D is the distance from earth to moon and this D is the diameter of the moon that is the distance between the positions P1 and P2 ok. So it says that D is very very less than capital D therefore the angle alpha angle alpha this becomes very very small. So now where we can say that D is the arc length of the circle at P as the center of the circle and capital D becomes the radius of the circle. Therefore we can say that the angular diameter of the planet alpha will be equal to the arc length divided by the radius where we have the arc length to be as the D and then we have the radius which is represented as capital D. Therefore we say that the angular diameter capital D is equal to D by alpha. So the next topic we have is some other units which we
consider to measure the length okay so we i said that usually we consider the length measuring in terms of meters but there are certain other units also which we used to measure the length for example first one we have is the 1 fermi where we represent 1 fermi to be as 1 with small f we represent it with the small f where the value of fermi is 10 to the power of minus 15 meter so whenever while solving any problems you get the value as 10 to the power of minus 15 meters that means it is fermi next we have is 1 angstrom where it is represented as 1 a not on the top of a which is equal to 10 to the power of minus 10 meters again we have is one astronomical unit which is 1 au where the value of 1 au is 1.496 into 10 to the power of 11 meters then one light year which is represented as 1 ly which is equal to 9.46 into 10 to the power of 15 meters again next we have is one parallactic second which is one parasecond whose value is 3.08 into 10 to the power of 16 meters so these are some of the other units with which we can measure the length okay so next topic we have is the range length so range length is nothing but it is a initial value starting to an ending value okay so we can define like in physics we have the range starting from a minute tiny particle of an atom to the observable universe where the radius of the nucleus of an atom is equal to 10 to the power of minus 15 meters and it ends up to we have it to be as 10 to the power of 26 meters that is the radius of the observable universe so in physics we have the range length starting from 10 to the power of minus 15 meters which is the radius of the nucleus of an atom to the 10 to the power of 20 6 meters which is the radius of the observable universe so clear so students in today's class we have studied about the how to measure the large distances then we have periodically derived how to determine the large distances then the distance of the moon angular diameter of the moon then we spoke about the range length then also about few other units which we use which we used to measure the length thank you